Once again, you're welcome to The Pulse. And as always, your views and comments are welcome here on the program. Look for us on Facebook and Twitter at Join News on TV. Drop your comments. We'll be glad to share your thoughts with the rest of the world. And we begin today from the courts where the lawyer for the former Black Stars defender, John Pinto, has denied allegations of assault against his client. Kojugan Daudu told in a crack court today that Mr. Pinto did not assault the, the Legon District Police Commander and that he will produce the evidence to back his position. Your Mrs. Raymond Akwa spoke to Mr. Daudu at the court today and joins me now in the studio with details. Raymond, good afternoon to you. Uh, before we get to what Mr. Daudu called evidence that indeed John Pinto, as was earlier reported, beat up the wife, that is not the case. What, what transpired today in the courtroom? So the case was supposed to be heard proper today after several putos because there were problems with when the date could be available and the JUSAC strike. So the prosecutor was in court. Lawyers from what they call Mr. Pinson was in court. He, John Pinson himself, was also in court. The only person they were waiting for was a crime officer who would then come and remain witness for the state in this case. When the crime officer arrived, there was a little problem. The prosecutor then realized that he had not brought the docket for the case because to him, he did not get the go-ahead prior to coming to court. He was suspecting the case may be called, but did not bring the docket because he had an arrangement with a crime officer for him to inform him ahead of time when the case would be called. Mm -hmm. So that particular process was not heeded to completely. So he was confused as to why the crime officer was available at that time. So the judge had to stop in and stop the bureau over whether the state is ready, the state is unduly delaying the case, and whether the state is not serious about prosecuting this particular case and is merely doing witch hunting. Then there was an agreement. The judge said, can you come back tomorrow and start this case? Said, yes, we can do so. We want to put things in place, but we can do so tomorrow. Then lawyers from Mr. What we call the pencil also agreed that tomorrow should be the best time for them to commence the case officially. So it was bound to start, but had a heavy blow because of the problem on the side of the state. Okay, so tomorrow the case will be back in court. We'll see what happens. But for the lawyer for John Pinstow, earlier we heard that he had beat up a district police commander. How come we're learning of a different account today? So the claim from the police and the commander in this particular case of the Legon district mm -hmm. is that he sought to resolve a problem between John Pencil and his own wife. But in the process, John Pencil assaulted him when he invited him to his office. So that assault was a slap. And he said he had enough evidence to suggest that, he had enough evidence to suggest that really what he did was to slap him in his own office with others there. But the lawyer for what they call it, John Pencil says, I mean, there was an altercation, exchange of words, but it never rose to the level of a slap or assault. So people should not put out there, and that's denting the image of the gentleman, because already they are calling him a thief. Already they are saying that he's stolen a car from his own wife. Mm -hmm. So he was an opportunity to clear his name, and he has enough evidence to prove to the court that there was no slap on the grounds. Indeed, if there was any attempt to assault, it was rather he, John Peso, who should be complaining because the attempt of assault was made on him. Okay, so two stories we have here. The police saying, you beat up our commander. Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Pence's lawyer says that no, we did not touch him. It was mm -hmm. a verbal altercation. For the police, what was their response to this today? This words of Mr. Dowd. They didn't have any response at all. I mean, they were more interested in resolving their internal problems between the crime officer and the prosecutor so they knew when to come back to court. So mm -hmm. this issue was merely like to them, not really. The case has not started, so why should we go into the details of the case? Okay. So, I mean, Mr. Pence's lawyer even asks, give us a charge sheet and we'll show you why what you're saying is not true. Mm -hmm. And okay. they say that, in fact, the police even said that they will amend the charge sheet. They are going to add more charges to it if they get the opportunity to do so. All so right. tomorrow will be D-Day for this case. Looks like there's a lot to expect for tomorrow, but we're, we're seeing pictures of John Pinto today out of the court. Uh, tell us what his demeanor was today. He was very quiet. I mean, footballers are known to be exciting people, people of energy and all of that, but he was very quiet, seated in the corner with his usual hairstyle, black shirt, and the jeans. What we did not see many people follow him. It was only two gentlemen who he came with and left with in the same car mm. together with the lawyer. Did the wife show up? No, there was no evidence or there was no, what they call it, sight of any woman who claimed to be wife or called in by the police as mm. witness. 
who is the wife. So okay. nobody came in that particular category. All right. uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but this is not the only case you followed today in court. This is for the John Pato case in question. But also, there were some developments of the High Court in relation to the suspended MPP chairman, Mr. Pella, for Korea. You covered that case as well. What happened? The serial sitting continued today. The consistent sitting is basically because the judge believes that the case is being unduly delayed. So consistently, he has agreed that now he's going to sit every single day. That is the agreement. So today they continue the sitting. M M Mr. Foucault, uh, up until now, was the one who was being cross-examined. Now his first lawyer, when all of these issues started, the first lawyer we had was Martin Pebu. Martin Pebu represented him before the MPP disciplinary committee. All of the objections that were raised there, he led them. So he came to court to testify because he's no longer a lawyer for Mr. What they call it, Afoko. Okay. But he came to court today to testify as to what really happened before the disciplinary committee. Because the crux of Mr. Afoko's case is that he was unfairly treated. Indeed, the National Council was supposed to appoint members of the disciplinary committee, which did not happen. One deputy junior could see the MP for Takwan Suryem was illegally smuggled onto the disciplinary committee. And that's the words of the uh, um, for the that's legal the, counsel for Mr. Afoko. Yes, that is the Afoko case proper. Okay. He said that she was illegally smuggled onto the committee, making the committee null and void, improperly constituted. So that was his earlier argument. This is the same crash that is putting before the court today. Mr. Pebu today was supposed to lead in evidence in that particular direction. In fact, he did. He actually talked about why he believed that the disciplinary committee had constituted itself into judge jury, mm -hmm. took on these objections, did not refer to any higher body, mm -hmm. when it was the same group he was objecting to, ruled on the objection, dismissed all of them, and even did not write back to the Afoko and team about the objections. What they did really was to put up in the media that we have dismissed our focus objections and all of that. So he felt that every single process along the value chain of justice was damaged and properly, improperly skewed to make Mr. Afoko to remove him from that particular position. Okay. So that was his case. But the response from the lawyer for the MPP, Gofer Odame, was for him to prove to the court. And this question had never come up, up until today. The simple case was that Show us which part of the MPP constitution states clearly that it is only the National Council that can appoint a member of the Spine Committee. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Raymond Akwa. And as you mentioned, for the Afoko case, it's a series of court cases that we will see in the coming days. And so this is just one of many that we've covered today. We'll bring you more on that particular development. As and when Mr. Paul Awintemi Afoko returns to the court and this matter continues to travel.